Hey there, how's it going everybody? Dan here with PlantAbundance.com. So I'm standing here under this beautiful garden arbor. This was made using a cattle panel. Uh, I've had this for several years now. Different plants grow on it every year. But I have one perennial that consistently comes back and I've spoken on it in previous videos. That is none other than the Wisteria sinensis. I want to kind of add to that discussion a little bit today and tell you a little bit more about the plant and the results I've been having. First off, I've got two different wisteria vines that I'm growing on either side of this garden arbor. And you can see by the girth of the trunk that the actual plants aren't all that large. Now that's due in part to the fact that I prune this vine back pretty heavily each year. And I'll share with you now how I accomplished getting the perfect size vine going up and over a 16 foot cattle panel. So what I do is I prune this back at about three and a half feet each year. And what that accomplishes is that allows some of those nitrogen nodules that are on the root mass of the plant to fall off and help to feed the surrounding plants and help to build the soil. Because when you prune the wisteria back, what happens is there is some root die off as it's not needed to feed such a large shrub anymore. And in fact, the wisteria vine is known to thrive with a bit of abuse and proper pruning. You actually increase your blossoms and the vigor of the plant. So everything you see growing up and over this arbor is all new growth. And by summertime, you should have a fully engulfed garden arbor. Now, the wisteria can grow in zones 5 to 9, so the majority of the United States. This is a perennial vine, and if not pruned, it can really just keep growing and growing and going. It's actually considered invasive in many areas, and sometimes I look at that and think this is just a really resilient plant. But it really can handle drought well. It doesn't need fertilization. And one of the coolest features about this plant is that the blossom petals are edible. Now, the other parts of the plant, the leaves and the seeds, are toxic. So you want to stay away from that. But the flower petals, you can eat those raw. You can cook them up like fritters. And I'm not going to give you that example today as I only got a few blossoms right now and I just want to keep the beauty in the garden. And by the way, all that chirping in the background, that's actually coming from this little bird's nest. Uh, they built a little home here under my garden lamp. And you can see they're defending the territory now. They're not really liking where I'm standing, so I'll get out of their way. Another really great feature about this plant is it seems to be very compatible with other plants growing in and around it. As you can see here, I've got some Chinook hop vines growing up through this trellis. And I've also got some birdhouse gourds here. And everything's growing very well together. So if you're not yet growing wisteria, look into it. This is such a great plant. So much to get excited over. You know, the blossoms put off a beautiful fragrance that just wafts through the air of the garden. And you can grow these up walls. You can prune them to be more tree-like. And they can live well over 100 years. Well, that's it for now, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, I hope this video finds you and finds you well out in your garden, and out in the world, planting more abundance in your life. Take care, everybody. I'll be talking to you again soon.